Let's talk skincare tips for rosacea. Well, hey guys, y'all know rosacea. It is a chronic inflammatory skin condition. You get these little red bumps, often on the cheeks, and you get episodes of flushing and blushing. You have burning, stinging, sensitivity. Skincare products just don't feel good going on. Over time, that flushing and blushing can lead to fixed facial redness, as well as prominent dilated blood vessels known as telangiectasias. Now, I have a lot of videos on the different medications to treat rosacea as well as different light-based devices to treat the redness, the dilated blood vessels. But what can you do to help cut down on flares and control this condition? Number one, have some sense of what your triggers are. On the screen, I'm going to put a list of some of the most common rosacea triggers. Take a look at that, screenshot it. This is going to vary from person to person. Everyone's triggers are unique. You'll notice at the top of that list is sun. Yes, sun is one of the most common triggers for a rosacea flare-up, so sun protection is a must, but also alcoholic beverage consumption, hot liquids, soups, certain spices, spicy foods, even working out because it creates increase in blood flow to the skin that can precipitate a flush. When you work out, I suggest working out in a cool room with good circulation so that you don't heat up too quickly. And also you might elect to have a cup of ice nearby, put some ice chips under your tongue that actually can help halt a flare up of your rosacea or a towel soaked in some cool water you put around your neck can also help quite a bit. Skincare products likewise can be a culprit in rosacea flare-ups. So number two is your skincare routine pretty simple. Cleanser, moisturizer, and of course sunscreen are the sort of basics that you know are at the very least the most that you would ever need. Now that's not to say that you can't experiment with serums and other products and trust me there are some great additional skincare products with active ingredients in them that genuinely can be beneficial for rosacea. For some people, having too many cooks in the kitchen ends up aggravating their skin. Cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen. When you wash your face, use lukewarm to cool water. Remember, rosacea hates anything that brings a lot of heat to the skin. So make sure it's lukewarm to cool. Importantly, when you wash your face, use your finger pads in soft circular motions. Don't use a washcloth, a spin brush, a scrubby brush, anything abrasive. It's going to agitate the skin barrier and lead to a flush. Now, a lot of people with rosacea struggle with burning and stinging when they put stuff on their skin, skincare products. Here's a tip that could be a game changer for you. And it kind of contradicts a lot of my skincare routine basics advice that I typically give. Normally I tell people after you cleanse your face and you rinse the cleanser off, immediately apply your moisturizer or immediately apply your serum or immediately apply your toner or whatever. Because in doing that, it enhances the penetration. But here's the thing, if you have rosacea, that time period after you have just cleansed is actually when your skin is most likely to burn and sting with topical products. So if you need to, you might try actually just pat dry it, drying the skin with a, a towel real gently after you've cleansed and waiting a full 30 minutes before applying, say, your moisturizer. This can actually help quite a bit in reducing the symptoms of burning and stinging and irritation. If you've watched my videos on how to introduce a topical retinoid for sensitive skin, I also give this recommendation in that video. Are there any skincare ingredients that you should avoid? Well, triggers are individualized. I can't predict what's going to be a problem for you, but I will say this, when it comes to skincare products, here are ingredients that are most often problematic. Number one is actually alcohol. Now, alcohol and skincare gets a bad rap, okay? A lot of people are afraid of it. It can be a little drying, but it's actually a good thing for the most part in a lot of skincare formulations. It helps with ingredient stability. It helps in enhancing penetration of ingredients. I mean, it's generally a good ingredient. But for people with rosacea, sometimes they just don't get along with it. Witch hazel is also a common potential irritant for rosacea. Menthol, eucalyptus, peppermint oil, tea tree oil, any kind of essential oil, ugh. and of course fragrance. Fragrance can really be a problem for rosacea. Some compounds in fragrance mixes can dilate the blood vessels in the skin. And of course, that's a no-go for rosacea. It kicks off that flare of redness. A lot of you guys, over the years watching my channel, you have commented that you took my advice early on about avoiding fragrance for rosacea and it's been a game changer for you. So if that is you, talk about it in the comments and start a conversation amongst yourself because it really can help out a lot. Fragrance isn't necessarily bad and not everybody has a problem with it, but it can be a big culprit in flares of redness for rosacea. I do suggest applying a moisturizer to your face on a daily basis. This can actually help cut down on flares for a few reasons. Moisturizer 
moisturizers will limit the penetration of things that aggravate your skin. Moisturizers also will help with barrier function. So there are a lot of different things going on in the skin to lead to rosacea. You have your genetics, you have some immune dysregulation, you have demodex mites for some people in particular with rosacea can be a real source of inflammation. You also have blood vessels that are a little bit more quick to dilate and bring in more inflammation. But did you know you have an impaired skin barrier? People with rosacea, their barrier is impaired. This allows for more penetration of irritants, escape of water, and can you know be a major contributing factor in flushing, blushing. So using a moisturizer can really be a game changer for your rosacea. Not only that, but there are certain topical medications that can really, really help rosacea, but are actually kind of drying or difficult to tolerate. For example, a topical retinoid like adapalene can really help get rid of, calm down, and prevent those little bumps of rosacea. And with ongoing use can actually help augment barrier function. But initially, topical retinoids, whether it be adapalene, the gentlest, or any of the others, can be tough to tolerate for rosacea. Using a moisturizer along with a topical retinoid game changer in helping you to tolerate it better. Likewise, azelaic acid, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Anti-inflammatory, also great for the redness. May also help exfoliate ever so gently to cut down on excessive dry skin that those little demodex mites feed off of. It's also antimicrobial, so may help cut down on some of the problematic bacteria that live on demodex mites. But if you've ever used azelaic acid, a lot of people find that, not so much that it burns and stings, although it can, but that it causes them to have some itch, which is not fun either. Using a moisturizer can help cut down on itch as well. The other topical medication that can be particularly aggravating to the skin, and people are always shocked when I say, well, if, you, if you're able to tolerate it, guess what? It can be a game changer for your rosacea. Benzoyl peroxide, the acne treatment. They even have a new prescription benzoyl peroxide, Epsile, that is specifically formulated for rosacea to be a lot gentler. All in all, if you are using a moisturizer, it can help you better tolerate. What's a good moisturizer for rosacea? Well, again, I suggest choosing moisturizers that are free of fragrance. You don't need to spend a lot of money on a moisturizer. There are so many great options out there, like where do I even begin? I will say this, there are some ingredients, if you tolerate them, that can actually be helpful for the redness and for the symptoms of sensitivity and for the moisture barrier. One, which if you watch any of my videos, I feel as though I can't do a video without mentioning this ingredient, niacinamide. <laughs> niacinamide is great for both the redness, it's great for calming down inflammation in the skin, which is a major part of rosacea. And it's really helpful for your moisture barrier, which remember is impaired with rosacea. Licorice root, also a wonderful ingredient, has anti-redness properties associated with it. Topical soy can be beneficial for redness as well. Here's an ingredient that most people think about hyperpigmentation when they hear, not redness, not rosacea, but it actually can help possibly with rosacea redness, and that is tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid, you won't really find in a moisturizer. You might need to get a serum that has that in there, but it actually can be helpful for redness, possibly because of how it works on, you know, some of the aspects of blood, but also it is known to improve barrier function. So that's another one. I recently reviewed for you guys a great tranexamic acid serum that you might give a try at some point uh, from Minimalist. The other thing to take into account and pay attention to for yourself, because it may be playing a role, is heavier moisturizers, thicker, richer creams, exclusive balms. For some people with rosacea, those trigger a flare. You may need to choose something like a gel that is more lightweight in consistency, a gel moisturizer, a gel cream. Speaking of moisturizer, remember, sunscreen is a moisturizer. In addition to having active ingredients that protect against ultraviolet radiation, sunscreen is in a moisturizing base and help reduce water loss, limit penetration of irritants and allergens. So if you're wearing your sunscreen during the day, congratulations, you are also using a moisturizer. So you kind of get a two, four, one. So it's great. And you know, sunscreen is really important with rosacea. I mean, it's really important in general, but especially with rosacea uh, because it's a common trigger, the sun. But don't just rely on sunscreen. Make sure you're protecting your skin with other methods like a hat, shades, you know, your, the rest of your body with protective clothing. When you are spending prolonged periods of time outdoors, enjoying outdoor activities, seek shade. Say you want to introduce a skincare product. I definitely encourage people with rosacea to do a little test spot on their neck, the side of their face, rather than going all in and putting it all over their face. I mean, that's a good idea to do regardless of rosacea, but especially here with rosacea, because you'll have some sense right away, 
I like putting it on the side of the face if it's going to immediately cause redness, stinging, sensitivity, in which case it's not a great option for you. But the thing about rosacea and being so sensitive to topical skincare products, it's like another big reason to just focus on keeping your routine simple and sticking with it because like going through the hassle of trying out products only to have them not work out for you, it gets expensive. Um, unless, you know, the store where you bought it at is open to returns. Um, but let's face it, that, that's very time intensive. So if you are someone who finds that products burn sting, but you've found a routine that works for you, just stick with it. Just stick with it because it can get expensive trying to experiment around and it can aggravate your skin. What about red light? Red light can actually be quite helpful for rosacea because it is anti-inflammatory and has been shown to be helpful actually for calming down some of the inflammation in the skin that might aggravate rosacea. But it's the kind of thing where if you're not consistent with it, it's a complete waste of money, okay? So long story short, yes, a red light mask can be helpful for rosacea provided you are motivated to use it consistently. All that skincare aside, what about your diet? Are there any foods that you should be eating or avoiding if you have rosacea? Well, it's kind of challenging to say what foods you should be eating, but I will say when it comes to rosacea, there are actually several foods that can be a trigger for your rosacea. Certain spices I already alluded to can be problematic, and these include cinnamon, for example, because certain spices and certain foods contain compounds that are um, known to activate something called TRPV1 in the skin, which is contributory to the flares of rosacea. Now, if you're wondering what other foods might be problematic, I want you to watch my video on foods that cause facial redness because this is going to open your eyes as to potential triggers above and beyond that list that I showed you at the beginning of the video, food triggers that you might want to avoid or try to avoid if you have rosacea. If you try avoiding them and it doesn't make a difference, then by all means, continue eating them because you don't need to eliminate foods just, you know, willy-nilly. Only keep them out of your diet if they truly are a problem for you. All right, guys, that is a wrap up with regards to skincare tips for rosacea. I hope you all enjoyed this video. On the end side, I'm going to put that video about foods to consider avoiding, I guess, uh, if you have rosacea because they contribute to facial redness. So check that one out next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.